Welcome to the Make Flux review of the DigiX, the Arduino compatible development board by DigiStump. So here's the DigiX. The DigiX has come via Kickstarter from a gentleman called Eric Kettenberg. This isn't Eric's first development board he's launched via Kickstarter. Earlier on this year, he uh, launched the DigiStump, uh, sorry, the DigiSpark. The DigiSpark is tiny by comparison. It's about the size of a small USB thumb drive, and it, uh, this is powered by a 80 tiny 85 processor, uh, which only has a small number of I/O ports. Of course, the project in mind would be very different to the the DigiX. The DigiX, by comparison, is much bigger. Um, it you, it's similar in size to Arduino's a uh, Mega. Uh, 2560 board. Besides this and an extended number of I.O. ports, that's probably where the similarity ends. Um, what, what Eric appears to have done here is, is take some of the best features of, of multiple different Arduino boards and to combine them into one and to a large extent I think he's done a great job. Um, we said uh, I've had an extended number of I.O. ports. This actually has 99 I.O. ports. Uh, 12 of them are PWM ports. Uh, 12 are analog inputs and uh, two are actually analog outputs and we'll mention a little bit more about that after. Um, it's powered by Atmel's ATSAM 3X AT processor which is actually a 32-bit ARM Cortex M3 processor. This runs at 84 megahertz and on board it has 96 kilobytes of SRAM and 512 kilobytes of flash storage. So, um, as you can see, there's quite a few uh, different features on board. Um, you probably notice there's two uh, radio modules here. So, uh, the first one here is actually a Wi-Fi module. Um, it has an integrated antenna and it has a, uh, an expansion socket here, so you can uh, use an external aerial. Um, what, what's really interesting about this is, is that this, this uh, module acts very similar to the one of the Arduino Yun. Um, the Yun has what uh, appears to be a wireless uh, server. So at the moment that you apply power to the board, what happens is uh, the uh, a Wi-Fi uh, access point uh, is created uh, via the module, and you can connect to it via a mobile phone, um, a, a tablet, or a or a laptop. Uh, and then you can configure the Wi-Fi on here. So you can uh, pre-configure it to actually attach to your Wi-Fi, your home Wi-Fi or your office Wi-Fi. Um, and this doesn't require any programming to do this. Uh, and at any time you can always reset this without having to uh, connect it to uh, back up to your computer. Um, and again, this, this shares a lot of similarities to how the Yun works. Moving on, uh, over here we've got a NRF24 uh, wireless module. Now, um, if I just remove this, as it is removable, um, these are quite common to, to be found on eBay. They normally cost about one or two dollars, something like this. Uh, what's great about these is the size um, and the fact that they have quite a high data rate. Um, what's Another point which is really interesting is that they actually handle errors very well. So um, if you do get some slight interference, it does seem to compensate extremely well. And for the val for the price, these are very good value for money. Um, the uh, with the libraries that are available, it is very easy to create a wireless mesh network. So you could imagine having um, uh, remote other boards remotely, which could communicate with your DigiX via this. Uh, and that's actually very easy to configure. Uh, what you might notice is it does have a socket here. It is a little shallower than the sockets for uh, for the shield. Um, one disadvantage of this is, is when it's connected, it does have a little bit of play, as you can see here. Um, that's not necessarily a problem, but it's just something to note that you do have this play, so just be careful when, when, uh, when using it. Um, if we remove this, uh, what you can also see here is we have a micro SD card slot. Now, um, being uh, here suggests that um, by design, it's not meant for being removed too frequently. And depending on your project, if you're just using the micro SD card to, uh, to store information that's been uh, received from here, uh, sensor information, for example, or maybe it's to access information to send on or to produce images or sound, then maybe it's not an issue. Um, however, as we'll demonstrate, if I take a micro SD card, it can be a little bit fiddly to um, to get this in. Um, 
in fact actually I've done it first time but uh, and that, that's good it shows I've had practice uh, but as you can see that's gone in quite fine I don't suppose this is really a problem but if you did need to have regular access to it you might find it's less convenient being here um, so moving on um, if, if we move around here I mentioned before that this does have two analog uh, two analog outputs so um, you can actually configure this to you do uh, stereo audio uh, from here and via this uh, 3.5 millimeter jack socket if we continue around you've got a micro uh, a micro USB uh, socket this actually serves two purposes. The first is to flash the device with your latest sketch, um, but also this also acts as a USB hub. So you can um, you can treat it as a host and you attach things like a keyboard, um, a mouse, um, other inputs, or maybe even something like a mobile phone in a similar way as you would with the Arduino Mega 2560 ADK, uh, where you can connect a, a mobile phone or flash storage. So um, besides this, there's not much more to, uh, to explain about the board. It does have a real-time clock on there. So uh, applications which do require um, a, a, a very precise timing uh, that will, will benefit from this. Um, the design layout is a little bit different to what was on the Kickstarter project. Um, first of all, the Wi-Fi module is the obvious thing, which uh, on the Kickstarter project it was shown as being uh, in this area here. Now, we've made some assumptions. Uh, we assume that um, this has moved over to this side mainly because of the access to the Wi-Fi. As you can see here, um, the, it doesn't matter if the sh shield attached, the Wi-Fi is still exposed and you do have clear access to the, uh, to the socket for an external antenna to be attached. If it was uh, over here and this was a shield mounted, it might interfere and also it would be a little less convenient to access the, the socket. Uh, besides that, the board is mostly the same. It's, um, this is green, um, the production versions are black. Now, this is green because we've actually got, as you can see here, we've got a, uh, a Kickstarter beta edition board, uh, courtesy of Eric. So this is a pre-production model we've got here. Um, so this is just minor detail, really. Uh, what is really nice is that Eric's actually done this with a Creative Commons share alike license. So this means that the, the device um, and its designs are uh, made available to, to the public. Um, but the usage relies on the license that you will uh, share it by the means that you acquired it. So you will, um, you, if you were to use his work, his designs, that you will again share it on the freely. So before we mentioned that the DigiX uses the ATSAM 3x80 uh, processor from Atmel. Um, well, this shares in common the Arduino Duo, uh, which also uses this exact same processor. In fact, the uh, DigiX is actually um, the, the, the frame architect, the core architecture behind it is actually is based on the same as the Duo. Um, of course, the Duo only has 70 I/O ports compared to the 99 uh, on the DigiX. Um, so the, D the DigiX really does outperform with regards to this. Of course, also we've got the Wi-Fi, we've got the uh, integrated SD card uh, reader, and the NRF um, uh, support built directly into it. So it, it really is um, an improvement on that board, which has taken inspiration from other boards like the Yun, um, uh, like we said before. But who is the um, target market for this? Well, what we what we think from um, from really looking at this is is a few things. Uh, based on its price, um, which is currently at 59 US dollars, it's cheaper than all alternatives with this spec. Um, we mentioned before the Arduino Mega 2560. Um, well, that's currently retailing at 65 US dollars. So it, it is cheaper than that and it's more capable, um, which I think this only has 56 IO ports. 
Um, however, if you were to compare it directly with the Jew, which is um, a, a closer comparison, this is actually cheaper at approximately 50 US dollars currently. However, this doesn't have the Wi Fi, it doesn't have the NRF support built in, um, although it could do um, using um, easily with some jumper cables, um, but also it doesn't have the integrated SD card slot. So, um, you could say even if you didn't need the 99 IO ports, if 70 would do, it is probably still a better buy. So as your main driver for testing things, for prototyping things, this would be an ideal board because you have uh, most of the functionality you would need for, for the wireless, for uh, using remote uh, radio. This would make an excellent board, but at that price, it's quite interesting um, because it, it almost becomes, um, it's obviously not as cheap as you know, but it does become something you could consider buying more than one of and integrating directly into your project. Um, in fact, any project where you needed remote uh, automation, this is absolutely ideal for. Um, and at, at $59, it, there is no other comp competition really. So the things that we really liked about this board is that it, um, it, it performs exactly as you expect any standard Arduino. The sheer range of um, support that this has with the Wi-Fi, with the real-time clock, the um, NRF24 on board, the SD card, um, we, we, uh, and the audio, we found this a lot of pleasure to use. Um, especially the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi was, uh, was was absolutely painless. It was actually a surprise. Now we've used the Yun before. Um, to be fair, we haven't used it a huge amount, but I, I suspect the experience would be quite similar. Um, the fact that you can just connect to it out of the box without even connecting it to your PC uh, made it very, uh, very friendly, very familiar. One thing we did do is we created a web server environment on it. Um, we we created some basic HTML pages. We had this running for two days and it was still running as very fine, just as fast as it would do. And we were able to uh, send information to and from the board and it was activating an LED. Um, we also managed to, uh, using uh, another remote board, uh, we, we had a switch connected to another, uh, an Arduino. Uh, Arduino Uno uh, board and we wirelessly told the uh, DigiX to send a tweet and uh, you'll be able to see that on our site. This is sent directly from um, the, uh, the DigiX using Wi-Fi. There's no PC involved. Now this isn't anything uh, particularly special. Other boards can do this. What is great is Eric's uh, put a lot of effort into creating libraries, uh, sketches, examples, so you can get started immediately. We had a little bit of difficulty to start with. We worked with Eric to resolve this. Um, again, we've got a beta version here. This isn't uh, gone to production yet. Um, but it was it, we, we, we solved that and it works absolutely perfectly. It's very fast. Uh, we monitored it using serial and you could see what was going on um, using AT commands. It, it was a lot of fun to use.